Hey guys, Scott from Fry Props here, and you can see by the sheer number of wires we have out today that this is going to be a fun video. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to control 24 LED lights from a Peekaboo DMX and a 24 channel DMX decoder. We're going to be using the director software along with the Pico DMX to create a pattern of these lights turning on and off. We can create any pattern that we want. Uh, for today's demo, I think we're going to try to do sort of a chasing pattern where the lights turn on in a sequence back and forth. Um, but again, you could do anything you want. And these actually don't have to be LED lights. From this uh, DMX decoder, you can control any 12 volt device. It could be solenoids mixed in with this. Um, although if you are running something like a solenoid, you would have to have a diode in order to compensate for some feedback. Um, but that is possible. So this can uh, actually be used to create some more complex scenes and props if you want to. All right, so first let's take a look at what all this actually is. We have at the center of the screen the 24 channel DMX decoder and what this does is it takes the DMX signal from our controller, the Pico DMX, and decodes it into solid state outputs so that you can actually turn electrical things on and off with the DMX signals coming from the Pico DMX. So that's our decoder. We have 24 nano spot LEDs of different colors. Uh, we have six total colors of nano spot, so I've broken them up into uh, groups of three and we'll talk about that when we go to the wiring um, for the different colors. In the top left here, we have our Pico DMX. We have a adapter that takes our DMX cable coming from the Pico DMX and takes it and translates it to screw terminals for wires, which we have wired into the DMX in for our decoder. We have a trigger button for our Pico DMX, and we have 12 volt power coming in from the right here to go to the decoder, and 12 volt power as well going to the Pico DMX. Now let's zoom in a little bit and take a look at some of these wires. Okay, so you'll notice that on the uh, decoder itself, there are groups of outputs. So you'll see here, it has out one, out two, out three, out four, and so on. And again, along the top, five, six, seven, and eight. And each group consists of a voltage positive and an R, G, and B negative channel. Now, if you are wiring in an RGB light, you would actually be using the pus for your positive voltage, and then each one of these would be for the different channels of the light, red, green, and blue. Because we're using just uh, two powered wires lights that just turn on the color that they are when power is applied, we're just bundling all the positive wires onto the V plus, so you'll see three red wires going into the V plus on each one of these terminals, and then the other wires from the lights go into R, G, and B. Uh, so the one we want to control with the R channel is going to be in the R screw terminal and so on. So that's how we've grouped three lights on each one of these output groupings. And that's how we've wired up 24 lights to this 24 channel decoder. We'll zoom out a little more here so that you can see the connection to the DMX cable. So the DMX cable actually comes in here at the top of this adapter. Um, and then there are screw terminals here. They're uh, D plus, D minus and ground. And those are the same that are on the DMX signal input here on the decoder. So we've just taken DMX plus to plus, minus to minus, and ground to ground. And that gets our DMX signal from our controller to the DMX decoder. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the Pico DMX uses the free director software to program. So we're gonna jump over to the PC. We're gonna run through how you set that up and how you would program uh, lights like this for uh, your application. And we will be back with our programmed SD card to put into the Pico DMX and test our show. Okay, here we are over on the PC. Uh, we've opened up Director, and this is the screen that you'll see when you first open the program. So now we can show you how to set up the Pico DMX uh, to control our 24-channel DMX decoder. So uh, if it's not clicked, the first thing you want to do is select New Show, and then we're going to go down to the Pico DMX here, and we're going to hit Select. You can name your show if you want. We don't need to here. Uh, so we'll just hit Select. Uh, we already have an untitled show. We're just going to overwrite that by clicking yes. And it's going to open up director uh, proper. So here we have our timeline, which currently is at zero seconds. We haven't started anything. Up at the top, we have our different inputs, which for the Pico DMX are just the ambient mode, which is what we'll be playing whenever the Pico DMX is powered up, and input one, because it's a single input controller. So the first thing we have to do is add our DMX device to Director in order to control it. So we go down to the little plus button in the lower left hand corner here and we click that. It'll open up this window here where we selected device. We're going to be using a DMX fixture so we click that. It'll open up the device browser here. So here we click our manufacturer first. Uh, that'll be Fright Props. 
and then we can choose the DMX decoder 24 channel and it's going to populate all this information down here. It's going to list all the 24 channels, uh, all labeled with the name uh, for each of those output sections and the red, green, and blue channels. The channel type is going to be line fill. That We don't need value mask. We can change the color on them if we wanted to. We could select this and change them to the actual colors that we're using on the lights um, if we felt we wanted to. So we could have red, blue, and then white, and then yellow, green and white again if we wanted to we could go through uh, and do that whole thing set it all up uh, however we want and so once that's all selected we just uh, click select and then click select again it's gonna tell us what DMX address to use on the actual unit so we make sure we note that that it needs to be set to DMX address 2 and we'll go ahead and do that when we get back to the demonstration table and we can go ahead and hit close and it's going to set up our show so you can see here that now on the left it's auto populated all the 24 channels of our DMX decoder it's even got a little picture here of the DMX decoder letting us know what we're gonna work with to begin uh, we can just pull out the uh, record line in any one of the channels. Um, so for this demonstration we're going to create a uh, 24 second long uh, show. So we can grab the little record guy here and move him back and forth. We can even zoom in so that we can see a little bit better where we are. And the way that these line fill options work is that you just click in the space and drag your icon, your hand icon, to create a pattern of off and on and dimming. When the line is all the way at the top, as it is here, that's on 100%. When it's down at the bottom, that's completely off. And as long as you're clicking and holding, um, you can go off of your channel and you'll still be controlling the line fill on that channel. So that's how you can erase. If you just click and hold and go down below the channel, you can go all the way to the end, and now that channel is empty. So what we're going to do for this demonstration is have one second on of each channel. So each light in sequence is going to go on for one second. So the way that we do that, we just click in our channel, go up to the top, fill in the one second here at the beginning, and then let go. Go down to the next channel, and you can see that these are actually colored because we chose a color uh, earlier. So this second one will be the blue light, and we just keep going on like that all the way through. Um, this is a good reminder here that you probably shouldn't choose white <laughs> because white is actually the background color of director. So if you need to change that, just click, uh, right click in the gray box here, go to color, uh, and change it to something like black. And then that'll allow us to actually see what we're doing. So a little pro tip there, uh, don't use white uh, when you're programming in director with line fill like this. So we'll just go ahead and use black for our white and we'll go down uh, progressively like this for each different uh, light that we have just turning each one on for one second um, until we get all the way to the bottom we're gonna go ahead and do that now and I'll be right back when it's all finished up okay so we have gone through all 24 channels I've changed the color so it's a little bit clear what's going on in director I chose black for our cool white and our warm white lights uh, so that we could actually see the uh, pattern we were creating so you can see channel 1 red on for one second channel 2 blue on for one second all kinda going down in a row all the way down through our 24 second show until the end. So that should create a pattern of lights turning on for one second, uh, sort of chasing down the line uh, when we export and put it into our Pico DMX. Now one other thing we can do before we go is actually go up to the scene selection and go to our ambient show. And we can create a show that's playing whenever the Pico DMX is powered up. So to do that we would just take our uh, record line here and drag it out, say maybe 10 seconds. And you can see it's kind of already doing it, but then we would just drag and fill our red light to be on. We could create any type of program we want, so maybe we want it to sort of turn or be blinking on and off. So we go off to two seconds, you know, off at three seconds, off at five seconds. And we could just make that repeat. We could just drag this back, and that pattern will repeat over and over again. Um, if you have a dimmable LED light, you can also create dimming effects by just drawing a more gradual line that doesn't go all the way to the top. Now, nanospots don't dim all that well, so that probably won't work with these. So we're just going to kind of go with full on and off um, for this demonstration. But if you have a LED that's dimmable, uh, you can definitely do that. 
So the last thing we have to do is export our show. Uh, we just go up to the arrow here that it says export and click on that. It's going to uh, give us our SD card drive letter, which is G. Make sure that that's correct. And we're going to load the show into internal memory. That's the only thing you can do for the Pico DMX. And just hit select. It's going to export the show, as you can see down here, to that SD card. And then it'll pop up export instructions, which tell us how to eject the SD card from our computer. We're going to go ahead and bring it over to the Pico DMX, put it in, and test out our show. Okay, so we have our SD card here exported from Director. And before we put it into the Pico DMX, we have to remember to set our address on our DMX decoder. That's very important. If you don't have the correct address set, this thing's going to uh, work really funky. It's not going to do what we programmed in Director. So we're going to cut away, get a close-up of the DMX dip switches on the side here, and set our DMX address, and we'll be right back. Okay, so we are here on the side of the DMX decoder. We're going to go ahead and set our address. Um, you can see that on the top here, this says DMX addresses and function. You can actually program some functions into the decoder itself using a functions menu by setting this last dip switch down. But we're not going to do that. So up is off on this unit. And you can see there are numbers along the top here. And these will allow you to set all the possible DMX addresses up to 512 for the decoder. So we need DMX address 2. So all we're going to do is take the switch that's lined up with 002 and switch it down. And that's it. All right, with the switches set correctly, we can now insert our SD card into our Pico DMX. The LED light here will flash red as it reads our show. When it starts flashing green again, that means the show has been read and it'll start playing our show. All right, so now that our show is playing, you'll see that in our ambient mode, our red LED is blinking as we programmed in Director. We're going to go ahead and turn the lights off here, um, or dim them down, and then we're going to hit our button so we can play our light show and see how it worked out. All right, we have dimmed the lights. I'm going to go ahead and hit our trigger, and we should see the lights replicate the show that we created in Director, turning on one second each down the line, uh, right to left here, and then left to right up at the top. And there you have it. All right, so that is a look at how to control 24 LED lights using a Pico DMX, the 24 channel DMX decoder, and 24 nanospots. Again, these don't have to be nanospots. These could be any uh, LED lights, as long as they don't exceed three amps per channel. And I believe the maximum output of the decoder is 12 amps. So as long as they draw less than that, which most LEDs would, you can use any lights you want. If you have any questions about this setup, go ahead and leave a comment on this video or send us an email at sales at Thanks.